is what the World Heart looks like? Yes. Terrible and magnificent. Nothing that I ever read could have prepared me for this vision. I just hope that in spite of everything, your knowledge can help me. Because I have absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to do. Faced with any kind of choice, it is impossible to be sure of making the right decision. No one can see all the consequences of their actions on the future. But what I can tell you is that the entity within you is a piece, a limb, torn from the world heart by its own will. By sending part of itself to Vertiel to inhabit a living body, it knew it would be protected until it was possible to get that part back. But while it was incarnate, the demon saw what we have done to the world, what terrible damage intelligent beings are capable of. Alas, I fear that now it wants to destroy everything, wipe the face of the world clean of our corruption, rather than risk that it should happen again. You came to rescue me, even though it meant risking failure in your quest. I want to try to help you. I know you will do all that is in your power to save Vertiel. This world must be rid of the Ice Lords. You must destroy their link with the World Heart. But beware of letting the demon return to the heart. He will destroy all who live. It will take us longer to rebuild the world without it, but we can do it. We're here, Ranvel. This is the World Heart. The heart of the one who is just is often plagued with doubts, but it always speaks true at the last. When faced with the ultimate choice, the mercenary will remember her duty, and all will be resolved. Though he does not wish to influence her, the knight cannot hide that he hopes his friend will survive, that her life will be spared. The world heart. Damn. We made it. I would like to congratulate you in person, but I'm only a reflection. Today the living are not the masters of Virtual. You can save them, lead them, or destroy them. The choice is yours, and I pray the demon inside you does not make it for you. My people are decimated, and the humans as well. No matter what happens tomorrow, today, Virtual is a ruin. The flame will burn bright anew, and the necromancers will be the first into the fire. happen to Vertia. Thy world is weary, all but extinguished. Nothing remains to be saved. It must be cleansed. But inside me is all the power necessary to regenerate my world. At the cost of mine? Do not think it. Vertio needs the world heart. Thou canst not sacrifice it thus. There are still dragons, and the necromancers will be destroyed. The fire of the world heart is not completely out. It will burn bright again, in time. But without us, I forbid thee to do this. I will not die for thee.
And so ends the tragic, though nonetheless heroic, tale of Vulcan Half-Demon. I confess I may have romanticized some aspects of the story, though in my defense, I shall always have something of a soft spot for our dear Vulcan. By releasing the World Heart's energy to the surface, she sacrificed herself in order to heal Vertiel and bring an end to the long winter. Ill-prepared for such a powerful energy surge, the Ice Lords were instantly reduced to cinders. I can tell you, no tears were shed at that funeral. Of course, it was only a few centuries before other would-be mages attempted to follow in their footsteps, though what wonderful centuries they were. With Captain Buffalo leading them, the Freeborn Blades legend grew, and they flourished for a time. Sadly, the legend of Buffalo's immortality proved less than accurate, and after 27 battle wounds and another 40 or so years, he eventually died in his bed, to the great sadness of the three charming young women who were sharing it with him at the time. Alas, the loss of the woman who had briefly given Ranvall a taste for living swiftly drove him to bitterness and a return to his morbid desires. Happily for many of the world's downtrodden peoples, his obsession with reaching his final battle took nearly 20 years to achieve. Edwin's corpse was mutilated and burned by the command of King Relmar. Such a waste. I remember being quite disappointed at his decision, as I had hoped I might be able to inhabit her body. It had been an absolute age since I was last inside a woman. <laughs> to no one's great surprise, Relmar proved to be a formidable monarch. Strong, just, and loved by all. He returned a sense of pride to the elves that the war had stolen from them. The Red Scribes... Ah, oh, really? Don't get me started on those imbeciles. Nonetheless, it would be uncouth of me not to mention how heartbroken young Sybil was by Vulcan's death. Proud to have fought alongside such a courageous companion, the beautiful young scribe lifted her head high and transformed her grief into purpose. She quickly gained the respect of her peers and was elected chief scribe shortly afterwards when Liestas died quite suddenly. Apparently, the fool succumbed after having imbibed a large quantity of a somewhat questionable nectar that he and his doctor had invented. And as for myself, hmm, well, my goodness, I fear that is an extremely long story and you would quite literally die of boredom before I finished the telling of it. But you see, that's what I like so much about mortals. Their stories last just about the right amount of time. It'll take a few decades. And then they're done. And then they come around again. One thing is certain, I have all the time in the world. So who knows? I may get to tell you other tales. If you live long enough. Toodle pip. Necromancers will be the first into the fire. We don't need to go that far. All we need is to remove these spears, and the Necromancers will be left powerless. As powerless as when they enslave the World Heart? No, it will not suffice. They must be annihilated. I'll track them down. The Dead Walkers will be gone, the survivors will have a chance. And Vertiel will be rebuilt, little by little. Little by little? It would take centuries, nay, thousands of years for thy world to rebuild its energy. The world heart hath not been remade whole. Thou must permit me to rejoin with mine other half. 
so that you can take over and burn Vertiel? No thanks. I am the most powerful being in the two worlds. I've got responsibilities. Thou wouldst use me to reign over them, as did the necromancers. How long dost thou imagine that I shall allow thee to use me in this way? I don't know, but you'd better get used to it. You were the one talking about centuries and thousands of years before our worlds can be rebuilt. And I plan on being right there to keep an eye on them. Meanwhile, let me enjoy this victory in silence. Do you mind? Thank you. 